Hey everybody, it's Brooke. I hope you're having a great day. I have come to do the, um, well, tutorial, if it turns out that way, of Patricia Viramonte's really fun uh, clasp envelope journal. I saw her do this and it was just amazing. It's got so many flippies and flappies. And um, I made this one, which does not have a closure yet, but it was really fun. And then I went on Kathy Berg's channel this morning and we made one live. But of course, there was mm, so much hijinkery that it was hard to follow, I'm sure. So I decided to come and do a step by step. I will link both Kathy Berg and Patty Viramontes down below. If you haven't gone to her channel, either of them, please check them out. They're wonderful. And thank you so much for coming to check it out. If you are new here, welcome. Please like and subscribe and click the little bell so you'll be notified when I go live or do something else crazy. And if you're coming back, thank you so much. Please post um, pictures in the Facebook group of the journals that you've made because I know you're all going to want to go make one because they're so much fun and they're little chubby guys. I haven't even filled this one yet and it's chubby. So it's so much fun. And what it has is um, on the front here, it takes four clasp envelopes. And when you open it up on the front, here's this fun flippy thing. And there are little pockets right here. And then you have this. Oh, need some more glue. And that ties closed so it doesn't get in your way and annoy you. Because then you'll be forced to rip it out and toss it to the side. Oh wait, no, that's me. Probably not you. And then I sewed in signatures. And this one is made with my Creepy Baby journal digital kit which is available in my Etsy store again that is linked down below please feel free to go grab one they are awesome I love how this kit came out we did a whole bunch of jelly plating and then put stuff together as a digital that is a little different than your usual digital um, but super fun and this journal will be going into my Etsy shop next Thursday which is July 3rd or something Make sure to go and check that out. Come live with us Thursday night and you can see a complete flip through when this is done and then they'll be going into the shop. So that's the first signature. Then this is the second flippy part from Patty uh, Viramontes and none of this is hard at all. This to me is just complicated because there's a lot of flipping it around and making sure it's going the right way. So hopefully I can show you how to do it without it making your head explode or my head explode more importantly <laughs> um, and Patricia did a wonderful walk through but she was figuring it out making it up as she went along and for me I found it a little hard to follow it's a seven part series on her channel so I thought I would do all of the construction in one fell swoop which is the point of this so when you open this you have that there's a big yummy pocket there's that then you've got this You've got this, this opens up, and here's your pocket from your envelope. I've got a pocket that I made and haven't attached yet, but that's meant to go there to remind me. And then you have this and this, and then this opens this way. Another pocket that's meant to go there, a secret hidey hole, and that closes back up. So that's that really fun, it's the beat guy made with two clasp envelopes. So the cover is one, this is uh, two more, that's three, and then the piece in the front makes four. The envelopes that I'm using are 13 by 10. And then I have this last signature that's again, pages from the kit and some coffee dyed paper. I really wanted to leave a lot of this open for journaling or drawing or doodling or whatever makes you happy, photos, whatever. So that is what this is. So I've got three signatures sewn in, two of which are paper and one of which is the fun flappy guy. So that is that and then it all closes up and this wraps around and there will be some kind of closure that will involve, I think, wrapping all the way around the journal because as I said, it is a big flappy guy. He's, he's pretty fluffy up there and he's gonna get fluffier. So that is how that looks and I love it. So let's get started. Um, again, I have uh, four 
10 by 13 manila envelopes and I just went through and pulled the clasps, clasps off. It doesn't have to be neat because this will all be covered up. I just did a little repair if it tore there. And that is something to keep in mind is at the end you want to go through and see if any of the envelope parts are falling off because as it turns out, these are the ones I use for shipping. They're not made that well, like none of them are. They're fine, but if you pull them apart a little bit, other parts start falling off. So there we go. So we'll just start with one and let's see if we can get her done. Okay guys, let's get started with the first part, which is the cover of our journal. So you're going to grab your scoreboard and your first clasp envelope. That's hard to say. Okay, again, putting the flat end up against the side of your scoreboard. Use our stylus tool. Make sure I get the right end. <laughs> okay, and the first score you're going to make is at five inches. Stay in that track, maybe. And the next one's going to be at five and a quarter. Oh, there go the church bells. Hope that's not distracting if you can hear them. And the next one's going to be at five and a half. And what we're doing here is making the spine. Oops. Five and a half, she says. We got some wonky score marks here. Mm -hmm. Me. And then what we'll do is go over, so that's the spine of our journal. And then we'll go over to nine and um, let's see, I'm trying to think though. Well, let's just go ahead and fold it and then we'll see where to go. I think it's about 10, but I'm not sure. I can't remember. Yeah, I've made it a thousand times. I should know, right? Find our bone folder. It's hiding under piles. There we go. And I did go off the groove when I was, oops, when I was, um, scoring. Oopsie. Yep, we went off the rails again. Not surprising around here, is it? But again, not a big deal if the measurements are not exactly precise. As long as it's what you want, that's perfectly fine. And I'm just trying to make sure that we get it folded straight. Okay, so that's the second one. Oh, that was not the second one. This is the second one. Maybe we'll try it this way. Kind of get it from the top. There we go. And the way that Patricia explained it in her video is this middle line is where you're going to sew in. If you're only putting in one signature, you'll use this middle score mark to um, sew. That'll be a guideline. Uh, but the other thing was she didn't want her spine to be completely flat. So by putting in that center score line, it'll allow the spine to be a little more curved. Okay, so we've got those all done. Let's see here. So if we look at it from there, I'm just going to put a little mark to make sure I've got this right. Okay, so we'll open that back up and it looks like it's at about ten and a half. Is that right? Are we right? I think we're right. Yep. Looking good. Yep, so we'll do that fourth score mark is going to be at actually ten and um, five eighths because I did go a little wonky on my on my original folds and we need to get that clasp off. Let's do that. I thought I did this all at the beginning. Whoops. Oh, that's going to need a little glue. Yes, it is. Some of them pop right off, and some of them do not want to give it up. It did, eventually. Okay, so let's try that again. So we're at 10 5 eighths on this one. Another score just to make sure it's good and, and marked hopefully an easier fold 
and then I'm going to go over about a quarter of an inch from there, so that's 10 and 7 eighths, and that will give us a gusset when we fold the flap up over the book to try to contain all of its delicious chunkiness. But I'm having a heck of a time with scoring. I think it'll be okay then, though. We can, we can do it. Okay, so let's see if we can get those scored. We don't need um, the scoreboard again, so I'll just set that aside. I'm sure it'll crash over in a minute. <laughs> so let's see if we can get those folded. Let's just see. Well, there's one. And that did, it looks like it came out fairly straight. Let's get that next one. Again, fairly straight, so we went a little wonky in the uh, the channels of the score board, but that's okay, it worked out. So now we'll just give this a good score, because it never wants to stay down. Alright, so now we have our little cover. So what will happen is... Well, that doesn't look right at all. Oh, that's because it's not supposed to be folded up. <laughs> Now what will happen is it will fold over like that. There's our little spine that's a tiny bit curved because of that center score mark that we put in. And then we have this gusset to accommodate some fatness. Awesome. So what I will do is um, find my eraser, which is not here, so we'll just use this. I don't want to forget to take that tick mark off. And then the next thing to do is grab our cutter, which is over here. Okay, and we're again just going to take a tiny, tiny, tiny little sliver, just enough to open our pocket up. Teeny bit. that out of the way. Uh, right, and now we did rip that, but it's okay because we're going to seal this whole pocket closed. Well, and then it won't be a pocket, so we're going to seal this whole section closed. So I'm just going to put my art glitter glue in there. The rip part doesn't matter. Oh, look, it barfed out a bunch of glue. The rip doesn't matter because that'll all be covered up when we construct, or when we decorate, rather. So we can just mash that down, wipe off that glue that exploded. That's weird. That's never happened with art glitter glue to me before. Huh. Get that pin put back in there, the hardest thing ever. And there you go. There's the cover. How easy was that? Right? So I will put the measurements again where we scored down on the screen. And off we go to part two, which is the inner flappy parts. They're going to get bound in right here in your cover. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, guys, we're going to do the flippy insert. Um, and I'm going to do it a little bit differently than I did at Kathy's and try to make it not complicated or as complicated. It's really not. It's just a matter of paying attention, which may or may not be my strong suit. So I've got two of our clasp envelopes with the little... Claps, clasps yanked off. Let's get out our scoreboard. Okay. And we're going to put, we're going to do both of these exactly the same way. So put your um, flat end up into your scoreboard. Grab my stylus. And we are going to score at four and seven eighths. Okay. And that's seven little ticks. One tick before the five. Oh boy. I was so straight until then, and it just went off the rails. Darn it. Get over there. Okay, and then we're going to go over here and do nine and three eighths. Oh, I hope I was in screen. Okay. Nine and one, two, three. Three ticks. Okay. Here we go. Concentrating really hard. Not talking. Alrighty, so there. 
two score marks. Let's grab our other envelope and do exactly the same thing. I don't recommend doing them at the same time. It's what I did when I had to cut that bit out and it did not end well. <laughs> Let's just say it didn't end well. So I'm doing four and seven eighths and nine and three eighths. Alrighty, just double checking on my tick marks there. Okay, so the reason it's only four and seven eighths on the first one is because the flap of our cover is five, and I want to make sure this will fit in there nice and tidy. Nice and tidy. Okay, so now we have both of them scored the same way. Let's go ahead and, and make our valley folds. Those are all going to be valley folds. And crash, there it goes again. Out of the way so you guys can see I'm sorry I'm finding that my envelopes are not made exactly square so they're fighting with me a little bit and I, if I'm repeating myself I'm sorry I did just record this and had to chuck this segment so I'm doing it over so bear with my babbling so we've got our valley folds perfect squaring up those edges hopefully fighting a little bit right there. Don't know why. Give it a mash. See if it'll lay flat. Just Yeah, there we go. Now it'll lay flat. Do the same thing on this one. Okay. So, there is that. Get that nice and creased and as straight as we possibly can. Do the same on this. All right, so now we have two that are identical, right? And what we want to do is first we are going to trim off the top, or I'm going to because I don't want it this tall. So let's get out our cutter. Oop, and our scoreboard is trying to take a nap and in my way. All right, so here's our trimmer. And again, my cover is not uh, eight and three quarters tall, so I want this to be just inside the cover. I don't think I want it to be exactly the same height. So fold that and let's just see here. Nine or eight and three quarters, that would have been bad. So I'm gonna go just shy of eight and three quarters. One tick short. Get that cut off and do the same thing on this one. We'll double check to make sure we got that. I got those the same height. That would be very excellent. In case we need to do any more trimming. Let's just see here. Bingo. We got those done. Yay. And then we're going to take both of them and just trim a sliver off of the closed ends. Again, just a teeny weeny sliver. Teeny weeny. There's that one. And then there's that one. Now while we have these open, this is a good time to... My sliver was hiding from me. This is a good time to do some sealing so we don't have stuff escaping. Um, this is going to be one of our pockets here. So I'm going to go ahead and take my glue. You could also sew this. I'm trying to show it so you don't have to have a sewing machine or if you don't feel like sewing. If you're Kathy Berg and you're afraid of your sewing machine, you don't have to use it, Kathy Berg. Okay, so that's all sealed up and then do the exact same thing. So we're just repeating this, doing exactly the same things on two separate envelopes. Okay. All right, so here we go. We have two envelopes, yes we do. What we wanna do now, they're exactly the same. We're gonna take one of them and flip them over. So on one side, we have, um, Oh, wait, what have I done? I'm checking my cheat sheet. Checking my cheat sheet. See if I can get it right this time. 
That would be best. Okay, so they're going to be going opposite directions. One of them is going to have the envelope flap going this way. One of them is going to have the envelope flap going that way. Okay, and so on this one where the flap is on our right, let's go ahead and letter that. Okay, and we're going to do, once again, this is like the 75th time I've lost my pencil. We've got huge piles, clasp envelopes as far as the eye can see. So this is going to be A1, this is going to be A, this is going to be H, this middle piece is going to be H, and then we'll have I, and then if you flip it over, this will be J, this will be K. Okay, so we have this guy, oh, did I not glue that? Did we not glue those closed? Well, let's just go ahead and glue that closed. I thought I did. The hazards of making a video more than once. <laughs> no idea where you are, what you've already done. All right, so there's that one with our opening on the left and our flap on the right. Same exact envelope that has our flap on the left and our opening on the right. Well, I guess we should close this one too, huh? Live and learn. And you, again, don't have to... Uh, Trim these down if that's the size you want. If the envelope is like the perfect size, don't bother. Leave it full size and you don't have to do that extra gluing. Okay, so now we have this. We wanna make sure this is folded. You really do have to reinforce these creases. Okay, so here's this one. And we've got, we're gonna letter this one, which is D and then E and F. Okay, so this is where our flap go, goes this way, and it's on the left, D, E, F. Then flip it over, and you're going to have G, B, C. Okay. So, now, let's see if I can do this folding right the first time. Would that be crazy talk? Yes, it would. Even with all my cheat sheets, I'm still goobering it up. All right, let's just have a look see. So, we're gonna do this. Fold that there. We didn't reinforce that one. Fold that there. Fold that in. Okay, do that same thing with this one. Just making sure you're reinforcing those creases. Looking good. Okay. So now we will take the one that has A right here. Okay. And we're going to want A1 to be our cover. Hopefully you can see that. A1 is our cover. Here's our big yummy pocket. And here's A. And then what we want to have happening on the inside is we want to have this guy that we did the other direction. Fold it back up. Put B on the outside. You want A and B to meet, like that, okay? And there you go. There, it's right, okay? So when you go through it now, you have A1, then A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, last envelope right already got the clasp off you do want to take those clasps out because they'll make a big yucky bump okay so now with this guy once again we're gonna take a tiny sliver for our pocket Let's see if I can get that without having a giant crash oh that's upside down that won't help I'm waiting to hit the camera you guys it's right above me Okay, so we'll just take off the smallest sliver, like that. Oh, we might as well, well, we can't trim it down yet because it's not folded. Okay, so we'll put that there. 
And what we're making here is the part that goes on the front to get tied up with the cute little pockets and everything. Okay, so we are going to do some scoring. I buried my scoreboard. Buried it. Okay, so here we go. So we are going to get that in there, make sure it's, well, see, the envelopes aren't square. It's not just me. Cool. Glad to know that. Um, I've come across more than one of these that are not perfectly square. So don't feel badly. So we're going to score this one at three and three quarters. Oh, keep grabbing that. I should put it away. I am finding the stylus tool to be a little better at staying in the, in the groove. It's a groovy stylus tool. Just as I said that, it pops out. Now, Kathy recommended, recommended and advised me, go slow and push hard. Not so hard that you tear through, but. Okay, so we've got one score at three and three quarters, and this one's gonna be at eight and a quarter. Or you can just eyeball it. When you see what it looks like when it's done, you can fold yours however you would like it to be. There are no rules. Okay, and that's all the scoring we're going to do. So let's get that out of the way so it doesn't crash. So we'll get that folded. Oh, maybe I did jump out of the groove. Darn it. Darn it. Uh, oh, I do need my bone folder, don't I? I put that away too hastily. So it's being a little difficult, but we'll end up chopping that off because we've got to adjust this height also for the height of our journal. This one's crazy. It's got all kinds of flappy stuff going on. Yeah, that one's lost its mind. We'll have to ad address that surgically. So then we'll just take this one, start turning it around. Make sure we've got it kind of straight. Get that one done so what will happen with this is um it's going to go let me see let's pull this over so that's this guy so it's going to take this fold and make it a backwards fold go the other direction so really you have kind of a w well you're missing a, a leg on your w I guess you have a Z. Make it so you have a Z. And this is the open end. And this is the end with flap. Okay? So actually, do it that way. A backward Z. So much fun. Make a backward Z. Everyone enjoys that. Okay, and then when you have your backward Z, like that, just like flatten it like that and lay it down. Boom. That is pretty much done, except for trimming it down and getting rid of this part that's fighting with me because it's making me feel angry. Get our trimmer out. Get it the right direction, that's always nice. So many moving parts, so many. So again, I want this to be a little shorter than our um, cover. So, I don't know. Uh, our cover is eight and three quarters. We'll go to about there. I just want everything to stay inside the cover without flying around. So that works. It's humid. My hands are sticking to the adhesive. <laughs> okay, actually, I probably. Did, I, did we get that straight? Eh, ish. That'll work. We can live with it. <clears throat> Pardon me, I'm going to have a sip of coffee. Much better. Oh, except my finger's almost stuck in the handle. That would have made a mess. We would have been doing a lot of mistaken coffee dying right there. Okay, so we go back. There we go. Nice and flat. Hooray. And then we need to put our slit for our ribbon in to tie this little guy closed. So what you can do is either eyeball or measure, whichever works for you, let's do it this way, to find out exactly how tall it is and to find the center. So I'm going to pull out my 
Tim Holtz ruler, that handy middle ruler, finding the middle of things. Alrighty, so. Four and a little bit. Four and some. That is about the middle, give or take. But I want to do that. Sort of. Just eyeballing it. It's not going to be exact because my stuff never is. You know how I roll. Actually, you know what? It'll be easier to do it inside, won't it? Durr! I swear I've made this a hundred times. The camera makes me dumb. Er. Okay. So that is about the center. And I'm going to make a pencil mark at my zero right about in here. About the width of my seam binding. Does that look centered to you? Yeah, I guess it does. So um, the reason I'm suggesting using seam binding is it's the thinnest thing that I had that's strong enough to really make um, a good strong tie, but it's not going to add a ton of add a ton of bulk. So then open this up and grab your X-Acto knife and cut right along the crease where the flap folds. So this is an original crease to the envelope. It's where you would seal it closed. And just cut that. And then take some seam binding. Actually, before we do the seam binding, we have one other thing to do. So we have our slice there. And this is where I had those two cute little pockets. Well, that's where Patty had two cute little pockets. You can leave it as one pocket. You do whatever you like. But I have two pockets. One there and one there. So. Um, what you need to do is again find the center here if you want two pockets or three pockets or whatever works for you. What do I keep doing with my pencil? Who keeps taking my pencil? Oh, I put it away. That's crazy. Okay, so eyeball it, do whatever you want, but you would stitch, say, or glue, say, right there so that you would have two pockets. Make sure to unfold it before you stitch it. So right there in the middle, stitch, glue, whatever. And then you're going to feed your ribbon in or your sorry silk or whatever you're going to use. I cut mine way too wide. I overestimated the width of that ribbon for sure. But you're just going to fold, feed that through. Okay, and we still have to glue it to close it. Alrighty, so what will happen is this is going to come around like that. We're back to our original folded thing, and that'll go around like that and get tied closed, right? So we better close it on the bottom or it's going to be a mess. This is where we trimmed it down to be the right size. Open it up. Okay, and glue that closed. And then what I want to do, let's see if we can do this with it closed because it's kind of flapping around and making it hard to maneuver. So we'll close this up. And once again, of course, I cut too much, sorry, silk or seam binding rather. I always do. But I would rather trim a little off and waste it than have it not be long enough. Okay, so I'm going to miter these corners now and you'll see why in a second. So go ahead and doesn't have to be perfect. You're not, you're not going to see this in the end. This is just to help us with our, our little thing here. So now you're going to take the cover that we made, which is here, right? And this is going to go, here's our flap on this. This is going to go in here. Now you can see I didn't glue all the way to the edge, and that's to make this a little bit easier. But you're going to go ahead, insert that in there, make sure it's even enough for your liking, right? And I think what I will do is go like that, Oop, open this up, put our glue here and hope I can get it back where I had it. Here's hoping. And I find it easier to do one side at a time. But again, with the art glitter glue, don't press down until you're pretty happy. Yep, that works for me. So let's press that down. 
right? So here's our little flappy do. Then we can go up here and finish gluing right along there. Oh, whole glue on my new mat. What the heck? Okay, and then what I would do is I would go and run glue right along here. Oh, that edge popped out again. We'll have to mash that a little better. And I'm going to be fairly generous because, you know, this is going to see some action. So, again, you could leave that open and make that a pocket as well. I'm just concerned about bulk because it is, it's chubby. Okay, so then mash that down. And that, that gets sewn in the double, um, where we made the three creases in the cover. That's our spine, so that's going to get sewn in there. Along with, you know, if you want signatures of paper, whatever. And it folds over like that. So that is what we just made. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope I didn't make it too complicated. Um, and I so appreciate you checking it out. If you're interested in me decorating some of it on a different video, please let me know down below in the comments. And again, if you don't mind hitting that like button and subscribe, click the little bell, share the video if you feel like it. I would really appreciate that. Thanks so much for coming and have a great day. Bye.